I am an American soldier. I am a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will always place this first. I will never accept defeat. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined. I am disciplined. Physically and mentally tough. Trained and proficient in my warrior tasks and drills. I'm an expert, and I'm a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. They're strong, and there's Army strong. See what it takes at GoArmy.com. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our riding into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable riders to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a rider's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your riding into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. Hey folks, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Dr. Richard Harden. We are on the same mission, which is Waking Up America. We just have different paths. So stay tuned for some information on how you can keep up with Richard and all his work. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at rahardin.com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps stand ready to defend the American way of life. The few, the proud, the Marines. The following message contains a special offer for listeners of this station. Are you a man over 40? Are you constantly looking for the nearest bathroom? Do you wake up multiple times a night to use the bathroom? Right now, Perfect Prostate is sending out free bottles of their groundbreaking new formula to listeners of this station. Perfect Prostate formula was developed by medical doctor Mitchell Fleischer, and its ingredients have been clinically studied to reduce your frequent nighttime bathroom visits and promote healthy urine flow. Right now, preferred customers get their first bottle of Perfect Prostate absolutely free. There's nothing to lose. Perfect Prostate is guaranteed to reduce that constant urge to use the bathroom, especially at night, and promote healthy urine flow. Don't wait. Call now for your free bottle. Just pay shipping and processing. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. Supplies are limited. One free bottle per household. Call now. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. My name is Jesse. I'm a United States Special Forces widow. This gives me a unique perspective on the world around us. If you're willing to listen, listen, I'll tell you how I see it, and I won't pull any punches. This is my POV, which stands for Point of View. All right, this is Jesse. How y'all doing out there today? All right, first, I owe you guys an apology. I had to cut last night's short show 
super short, and it was due to a variety of reasons, some of which I'm not going to explain. Suffice it to say, I had other things that unfortunately had to take priority. I produced last night's episode of Constitution and Culture as I produce every episode of Constitution and Culture. I was also responsible for making sure conversations in science got on the air. Well, some things your body demands, no matter what's going on. And I'm going to leave my explanation for last night's show at that. Now, There's something I realized as I was closing out last night's show I neglected to do. Oh yeah, sorry, I am human, I do forget once in a while. Scott Harvath, I have not forgotten your struggle. I may forget to do the shout out, I I never forget your struggle. For those of you new listeners tuning into my show for the first time, wondering who this Scott Harvath cat is, He is a retired NYPD sergeant battling stage 4 esophageal cancer. He is a 9-11 first responder. And I'm convinced he's going to kick cancer in the 6 o'clock. 2017 is going to be your year, Scott. Now, for those of you who want to learn more about Scott Harvath, you can follow him on Twitter at S-C-O-T-T-H-A-R-V-A-T-H. And I guarantee you, his timeline is actually uplifting and inspirational. So, with that out of the way, and I apologize for not getting to you last night's gap, but last night's show was so quick. It wasn't even funny. I was almost off the air before I got on. So, that's all I have to say about that one. Moving right along. If you've noticed the title of my show, it says something about Iran thumbing its nose at this country. Well, I do have something to say on that issue. I really do. And we're going to get to all the details on that in just a moment. Because I've also got some interesting little tidbits about military readiness. Oh, yes. I do. And you ask, what's so interesting about military readiness? Well, you'd be amazed what some of these vice chiefs of their different branches had to say at a congressional committee hearing today. My eyes were opened, so I can only guess that yours would be too. All right, I'm trying to type here while I'm talking. Normally I can do a better job than this, but for those of you who don't know, and I know there's a few, many of you are out there probably don't, I've got a little bit of problem going on with my right hand right now, and guess what? I'm right-handed. So this means I am doing one-handed typing. Which really gets interesting, folks. I promise you. It truly does. All right, let's get that show prep out. Got a couple other things I'm going to cover before we get to Iran. This involves Japan and Baghdad. This is one I didn't see coming. Japan has approved a loan of about $100 million to support humanitarian counterterrorism and infrastructure projects in Iraq. Yes, $240 million to rebuild electricity infrastructure in areas recaptured from Daesh. 
Iraq's government income, which comes exclusively from oil exports, fell shor- sharply when crude po- prices tumbled three years ago. I did not see that one coming, but way to go, Japan. That's a North Korea story. We'll pass on him for just a moment. And that's another North Korean story. We will pass on that one for a moment. And another North Korean story. What would a day around this show be without North Korea and Iran? Come on. I don't think it would be a show around here. Here's another Dash-related story. Dash may be having morale problems. And for those of you new listeners just tuning in for the first time, I thank you and I welcome you. And Dash, for those of you who don't remember, don't know, or aren't regular listeners to my show, Dash, ISIS, and ISIL, they're all the same group of rascals, or dirty, rotten, bad guys. Take your pick. The reason this, your beloved show host, calls them Dash is it is a Middle Eastern acronym that they absolutely cannot stand. Therefore, I run with it. Dash may be having morale problems. Documents uh, for so 14 so-called problem fighters from one of the terror group's battalions shows the militants looking for any excuse to get out of warfare, even getting doctor's notes to pardon them from fighting. Oh yeah. And this is from a battalion mostly comprised of foreign fighters. So... A militant from Belgium secured a medical note which said he had back pain and could not fight. Another one complained about head pain. Another one doesn't have a doctor's note but says his will is a martyrdom operation in France. Dash documents include names, blood types, weapon specialties of each group, as well as lists of their wives, children, and slave girls. And yes, these documents were obtained by a journalist. What can I say but, Dash, keep up the morale problems. Oh, please keep them up. It's a drop in determination for Dash's Iraqi battalion as the cash-strapped terror group has suffered devastating military losses in Mosul. Way to go, Iraqi security forces. Oh yeah, you've been doing an outstanding job. And let's see if I can get my left hand to play ball here, folks. Yes, Iraqi security forces. You have been doing the outstanding job. However, the good thing about this is they're having morale problems. The bad thing is, these foreign fighters are looking to get out of Dodge and go home, which means they very well may take up martyrdom or other operations, terrorist operations in their home countries. Oh yeah, we don't want to see that. Sorry, not looking for that. So even though there's an upside that Dash is having morale problems, I don't want to see these fighters return home and continue where they left off. All right, I picked up an interesting story out of France today. Yes, France. You don't hear me say that one too too often. Former French President Nicolas Sarkozy is has been ordered to stand trial over allegations he violated France's campaign finance laws during his 2012 bid, failed bid, I might add, for re-election. Sarkozy was eliminated from this year's presidential election in November when Francois Fillon defeated him in the first round of the primary for France's Conservative Party. Sarkozy faces trial over allegedly falsifying account records by his party in order to hide more than twenty million in overspending in France. Overspending in France, presidential campaigns have a limit of twenty-two point five million euros or twenty-four million dollars for expenses. He has, den- of course, denied any wrong do- awareness of any wrongdoing. I'm sorry. 
I don't believe politicians. And some of the things... Some of the things that the spending was allegedly, the money was allegedly spent on. Luxury backstage dressing rooms at conference centers and halls. Builders put up not just a dressing room, but at one rally, builders put up not just a dressing room, but an apartment. Four rooms with an office, reception room, toilets, and a bathroom, and a sort of antechambers where, where visitors could wait. And this apartment slash dressing room was entirely soundproofed. Sarkozy's team repeatedly said they never demanded or asked for luxurious fittings. Sarkozy has always stressed he did not know anything about spending or accounts. So, who knows? And on the other side of this, Filion is accused of putting his wife Penelope on his parliamentary office payroll and paying her about $900,000 of taxpayer money over a 15 year period. Who knows? Who knows? I'd have to look into it more. All right, got a quick Israel story, and yes, we are rushing through this so we can spend the bottom half of the hour on North Korea and Iran. Mostly Iran, but we're, I can't go a show, whole show without North Korea. Just not the way to do things around here. Okay, yes, we're going to touch on actually two Israeli stories. Let me see if I got them. Yep. The first one is Israel going to annex Palestinian territories. Okay, this, first of all, if they do it, I'm expecting an intifada to break out. Now, for those of you who are regular listeners, you know that back in December, the UN's Christmas present to Iran, or a Hanukkah present, however you choose to claim it, I'm going to use Hanukkah. The UN's Hanukkah president to Iran was to declare all their settle, settlements in Palestinian territories illegal. Now, Israeli parliament passed a law on Monday retroactively legalizing the settlements built on Palestinian land. The fact that it passed shows the strength of Israel's right-wing parties. The opponents say this signals... A loss of hope for a two-state solution. All right, so let's discuss it just briefly. Israel's land grab that retroactively legalizes thousands of settlement homes in the occupied West Bank legitimizes theft, violates international law, and ends prospect of a two-state solution. This is according to, obviously, someone on the opposition side. All right. UN Secretary General Anto Antonio Guterres said in Tuesday's statement the bill is a con contravention of international law and will have far reaching legal consequences for the land of Israel. Now, I do want to remind you of something the UN Secretary General said a few weeks ago, and this is in reference not to Palestinian land grabs, but it sort of is. It was in reference to Jerusalem specifically. And Jerusalem is often at the center of all controversy. I call it the most uh, controversial piece of real estate on the globe, folks. All right. You're going to have to listen close. But the UN Secretary General said that it's clear that the temple in, in Jerusalem was Jewish. Uh, positions of UNESCO are positions of the governing body of UNESCO. They're not, uh, I mean, it is clear for me that the Temple of Jerusalem uh, was destroyed by the Romans, that it was a Jewish temple, as it is clear for me that uh, Jerusalem is today a holy city for three religions. I mean, this is, these are the facts uh, that nobody can deny. Uh, so let's talk about. Oh, yeah. So 
Jerusalem is a holy city for three religions. Now, that doesn't directly relate to the Palestinian territories. However, comma, Jerusalem is often at the heart of some of these conflicts. Whether they're claiming it or not, it's often at the heart. So, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas said the law is an aggression against the Palestinian people. And he said this shortly before he met with Hollande, who called on Israel to go back on the law, saying it would pave the way for an annexation de facto of the occupied territories, which would in fact be contrary to the two-state solution. Now, since we're met mentioning two-state solutions, let's see if I can get this other slightly older audio clip pulled up. Now, this is from former Secretary of State, John Kerry, if I've still got it, we're going to take a quick look. I'm looking. Takes me a second. Yeah, there it is. All right, this is from Sec former Secretary of State John Kerry. Today there are a number, uh, there are uh, a, a, a similar number of Jews and Palestinians living between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. They have a choice. They can choose to live together in one state or they can separate into two states. But here is a fundamental reality. If the choice is one state, Israel can either be Jewish or democratic. It cannot be both. Really? Israel can't be Jewish and democratic? Israel for the record. Yes, I'm Jewish. For any of you new listeners who wonder why I'm doting on Israel for just a moment. Israel is one of the most friendly countries to be some in the Middle East. In fact, the most friendly country in the Middle East to be anything other than Islamic. No, I don't mean Islamic radical. I mean just Muslim, a, wor a practicer and worshiper of the Muslim faith. Okay? I'm not discussing terrorists at the moment. I'm discussing your average Muslim practitioner. Moving right along, because we are almost at the bottom of the hour, and I'm going to have to run in just a second. Russia! Oh, what a joy! Russia will host a regional conference on Afghanistan later this month to discuss efforts at aiming the settled, protracted Afghan conflict into containing spillover effects of Daesh terrorists trying to get a foothold in the war-ravaged nation. Yes. And uh, so Russia, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said Tuesday Afghanistan has now been formally invited to another r round in mid-February where senior officials from China, Iran, India, and Pakistan will also be in attendance. There are not many friends on that list. I'd say India is okay. Pakistan I'm wishy-washy on. China, well... Iran, state sponsor of terror. Eh, wrong answer. Daesh emerged in Afghanistan about two years ago and has been ex conducting extremist attacks in the country and parts of Pakistan under its regional name, Islamic State of the Khorasan Province, ISKP. But the terrorist group has not been able so far to extend its activities beyond a few districts. The violent Daesh campaign has worried Pakistan, which sherry, shares a nearly 2,600-kilometer border with Afghanistan. And, of course, ta the Taliban has shown no willingness to engage in peace talks with the Afghan government and has extend, expanded its insurgent activities across the country, capturing more territory and inflicting more casualties 
on Afghan security forces as well as civilians. The United Nations, of course, has documented the sharp increase in dash attacks against civilians, particularly against Shia Muslim religious minorities. Remember, dash Sunni. And if you're Sunni, that means Shia is bad. Okay, got a quick story here out of Syria, and then I got to take the commercial break. The Syrian Justice Ministry denied the amnesty report, calling it completely devoid of truth. What report? The report that says Syria executes torture and tortures thousands of pr prison prisoners, thousands at, pr at government-run prisons. Oh yes. And, of course, we are discussing Amnesty International. The Amnesty report said an average of 20 to 50 people a day were hanged each week at Sedina Military Prison north of Damascus. Between 5,000 and 13,000 people were executed at Sedina in the four years after a popular uprising descended into a war. The victims are overwhelming, overwhelmingly civilians who thought, are thought to oppose the government. Many other detainees at Sedinia military prison have been killed after repeatedly being tortured and systematically deprived of food, water, me medicine, and medical care. The prisoners include former military, military personnel suspected of disloyalty and people involved in unrest. They underwent kangaroo court trials before military courts and were sometimes forced to make confessions under torture. Of course, as if I couldn't have written this statement, President Bashar al-Assad of Syria has rejected this report and similar reports in the past. And has said that the war has claimed hundreds of thousands of lives. Like I said, the executions were carried out secretly and those killed were buried in mass graves outside the capital with families not informed of their fate. The report was based on interviews with 84 witnesses, including former guards, officials, detainees, judges, and lawyers, as well as experts. I'd like to know what experts you can find on Syria, especially the Syrian judicial system. Amnesty International's findings are almost completely in our line with our death and detention, detention paper, and this was chairman of, the UN, of, a, of a UN panel. We mentioned the executions in Sedina have ex and have extensive details on the systematic details of regular ceremonies. They have to conduct hangings in front of an audience of public officials. This is one of the clearest instances of systemic practice that we have we had and based on some of the and based some of our key findings on. The foreign ministers of Britain and France decried Amnesty's findings. Britain's Boris Johnson tweeted, sickened by reports from Amnesty International on executions in Syria. He also said, Assad is responsible for so many deaths, he has no future as a leader. The International Committee of Red Cross has visited select government-run detention facilities since 2011, but its confidential findings are only shared with Syrian authorities. So, and the Red Cross has systematically, re or Red Crescent, depending on which one they're operating under in Syria, I'm not sure which. The International Red Cross Red Crescent has systematically requested access to all detainees by all parties to the conflict. So, they are doing their best. Alright, folks, I gotta pay them bills! I really do! And I will see you on the other side!
these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from the critique of the short story through to line edits on full-length novels. We also offer assistance on generating writer's bios for your websites. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. I've owned my company for 14 years now, and I can tell you that payroll is a four-letter word. I hate doing it. It eats up hours I don't have, and it costs me money I could be saving. But my accountant's too expensive, and I'm not sure who to call. But I know I need help. We're Paychex, and we take all the hassles out of small business payroll. We save you time and money. It's easy. Call, fax, or give us your payroll information securely online, and we take care of the rest. We calculate the correct taxes, manage payments and direct deposits. We even send out your checks. Payroll doesn't need to be a four-letter word anymore. We're so sure that we can save you time and money that we'll give you a month's payroll free. Just for calling 877-757-2782. Get one month's payroll for free. Call Paychex right now. 877-757-2782. That's 877-757-2782. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. scandal in South Korea is overshadowing in many cases the preparations for the Winter Olympics. There are still high hopes for the second Olympics to be held in South Korea, whose capital Seoul hosted the 1988 Summer Games. South Korea used the Seoul Olympic Games to highlight its economic rise from the rubble of the 1950-53 Korean War. The country has staged two Asian Asian Games, co-hosted the World Soccer Cup in 2002, and held other high-profile international events. Critics, however, question the need to host costly international events and waste taxpayer money when many South Koreans are struggling. The Pyeongchang 
Pyong Chang, not Pyong Yang Chang. Pyong Chang Olympics, much like like much everything else in South Korea, have been drawn into the country's biggest political scandal in decades. Prosecutors say Park Win Hae and her longtime friend. Choi Son Sil plotted to pressure businesses to donate tens of millions of dollars to two nonprofit foundations controlled by Cho, one of them sports related. And of course, remember, Park Win Hae is not the acting president. All right. Three Chinese warships sailed near contested Sen- Senkaku Islands within Japan's territorial waters. That's a no-no, folks. And this is after Mattis made a pledge to the Chinese Foreign Ministry that we urged that the after Ch- Ch- Mattis made a pledge with the Japan uh, Minister of Defense, saying that we will continue to recognize Japan and to J- I made clear that our long-standing policy on the Senkaku Islands stands. The U.S. will continue to recognize Japanese administrations of the islands. As such, Article 5 of the U.S.-Japan Security Treaty applies. Article 5, of course, commits U.S. to Japan to defend Japan or its territories if attacked. Now, this isn't the first provocation China has made. China has flown nuclear-capable bombers around other contested islands, including the Spratly Islands. Yes, we are back to discussing the South China Sea. According to officials, Japan scrambled eight F-15 fighter jets to intercept the Chinese flight while it was circumnavigating Taiwan. However, in recent years, China has constructed seven artificial islands in the South China Sea, placing runways on three of them. Yes, they have militarized their man-made islands. And of course, if you are a regular listener to this show, you know that there this was this whole mess was taken to the International Arbitration Court and the International Court of Arbitration said, "China, you don't control that much ocean." So, moving right along, we are finally, let me see, I think I still have those two North Korean stories. Yeah, we'll knock those out, and then we will spend the last part of the show on Iran. Oh, yes, two North Korean stories. Got to get into North Korean. Kim Jong-un recently toured a munitions plant. Now, Korean State TV did release release some still photos of this. Automation of all production processes, high levels of streamlining have reduced production costs while increasing output by five times compared with the previous period, according to Kim Jong-un. Kim also said workers must become knowledgeable people familiar with modern science and technology. Kim Jong-un, of course, regularly visits areas near Pyongyang, the capital, but has avoided areas where he's not well-liked, including North Himyang province, where a flood in 2016 left at least tens of thousands of North Koreans without shelter. The state in response built a massive number of new homes for flood fiction, but the construction effort has resulted in a glut of supply. North Korea is responding to the shortage of new tenants by ordering soldiers to move into the homes. The lack of new tenants is a result of a larger-than-expected mi- number of dead or missing. If you recall that flood, they reported just 180 dead. And they're also saying, flood, according to North Korea, many flood victims could have just crossed the river and escaped into China. Yeah, no. Now, like many closed societies, North Korea has a black market. And we're going to talk toilet paper on the black market in North Korea. If you pick up a roll of toilet paper in a shop catering to foreigners, tourists, or the relatively affluent elite in the capital, it would probably have a price tag of 200 to 400 won, or 2 to 4 dollars. 
Prices in yuan are calculated according to the official exchange rate. In reality, you can't pay in yuan, at least not at that rate. Typical Pyongyang residents are more likely to do their shopping at a place like Kwambok Department Store, which does take yuan and therefore uses an entirely different pricing system. Here, a roll of toilet paper costs 1,400 yuan. Can we say price gouge folks? And I am going to have to save the rest of that for another day because I just got a few minutes left and I definitely got to cover this stack of stuff on Iran. All right, Trump versus Iran. Remember, we, and then I've got a little sp couple spots on military readiness because I'm going to work that up for tomorrow, folks. The leader of the Islamic Revolution, Ayatollah Sayyid al-Khamenei, says the Iranian people will be responding to the U.S. Pre President's, President Trump's recent anti-Iranian threats on the upcoming anniversary of the 1979 Islamic Revolution. Oh yeah. Ayatollah Khamenei was referring to the date on the Persian calendar coinciding with the anniversary of the February 11, 1979 Islamic Revolution when the Iranian national staged countrywide rallies celebrating the revolution's victory. Trump tweeted earlier this month that as Iran is playing with fire, they don't appreciate how kind Obama was to them. Iranians are not afraid of threats. The leader said the new U.S. president says you should be grateful to the former president, U.S. president. Why should we be thankful for the cre creation of Daesh, the flames of violence in Iraq and Syria, and open support for the 2009 sedition in Iran? The leader of Trump said he had to. Be, the leader said Trump had to be thanked because he did the job for showing us a, the U.S.'s true face. During the U.S. election and after it, the gentleman Trump came along and laid bare the political, economic, and moral and social corruption with the U.S. establishment. Yes, keep in mind, please, this is a press TV, a.k.a. Iranian news report meant for English consumers. Ayatollah Khomeini made with remarks in a staff meeting with a number of commanders, officers, pilots, and staff, members from the Iranian Air Force and the country's Qatam al Anbiya at the country's Katam al Anibia Air Defense Base. During the time of the tyrannical monarchical regime, the Air Force was one of the closest sections to the U.S. tied political system, but the regime received mo the most vehement blows from this very section, something it would have never thought of. Now, I'm not done. We'll get to that one in a minute. And Ayatollah Khomeini rarely appears in public. He dismissed President Trump's threats on missile tests, saying the president showed the real face of America. No enemy can paralyze Iran. Now, take that and then realize that they pulled a missile off the launch pad. They had another one or more missiles ready to go, and it has been pulled back off the launch pad. We don't know why. Iran's not talking to us. However, comma, it was pulled off the launch pad, so there's something to be said for that. Now, of course, the White, ha White House last week imposed a new round of sanctions on Iranian individuals and entities Alleged in response to the recent missile test, Trump's co controversial executive order also temporarily bans Iranian citizens from entering the United States. Now, I was asked this on social media. What about the diplomats to the UN? All right. Always has been, always will be the exception. They get a very, very, very special, very, very restricted visa. They are allowed to enter the country. They must fly into and out of New York, and they must reside, live, work, shop within 25 miles of the United Nations. Is that restrictive enough? I think it is. 
I mean, we do host the United Nations on our soil, so we have to let the representatives to the United Nations in, but that doesn't mean we have to let them roam free. And Iran is not the only country that has the 25-mile restriction. North Korea, my other favorite topic, is another country with similar restrictions. Khomeini seemed to take a swipe at the airport chaos caused by the travel ban, saying Trump has shown his human rights by handcuffing a five-year-old child. An apparent reference to the case of Artemon Jalil, a dual U.S.-Iranian citizen. Keep in mind, Iran does not recognize dual nationalities, so according to them, I'm surprised this says dual citizen, because Iran does not recognize dual nationalities. They arrest an Iranian-American. As far as they're concerned, they arrest an Iranian. They don't recognize that dual citizenship. And the U.S.-Iranian citizen was detained for several hours at Dulles Airport as he returned home with his mother. An image did circulate on social media purported to show Artemon handcuffed, although the picture was actually of a different boy. Oh, yes. On Thursday, Ali Akbar Vatali, one of the Supreme Leader's top aides, called on the Trump, called the Trump administration inexperienced and vowed his country would continue testing ballistic missiles because, quote-unquote, is Iran is the strongest military power in the region and has a lot of political, economic, and military power. America should be careful because it's the one making empty threats to Iran. And, of course, we had the statement by... National Security Advisor, Michael Flynn. Let me see if I still got that audio, because if so, of course I'll play it for you. Just got to give me a second to see if I still got it. I don't have it currently pulled up. It's going to take me just a second. Hey, I got my ways, folks. I do have my ways. Sometimes it just takes a second. Yes, I'm almost to it. It's in a different location than some of my other files, so it takes a little longer. Some stuff does make it onto an external hard drive, you know. Gotta find it. Here it is. Let's take a quick listen. President Trump has severely criticized the various agreements reached between Iran and the Obama administration, as well as the United Nations, as being weak and ineffective. Instead of being thankful to the United States in these agreements, Iran is now feeling emboldened. As of today, we are officially putting Iran on notice. Oh yeah, them's fighting words. All right, got a couple more audio clips, and this is kind of a preview and a rewind. I've got one thing. You think our army is the best army in the world? I'd like to say it is. But here's a clip from today's con- congressional hearing on the state of military readiness. To, de- meet, to meet the demands of today's unstable global security environment and maintain the trust placed in us by the American people, the army requires sustained, long-term, and predictable funding. All right, what he is referring to in this sentiment was echoed by all four vice chiefs from all four service branches that were present at this hearing today was get rid of sequestration, pass a budget so we know how much money we have and don't have to jump from continuing resolution to continuing resolution, which if you are listening to Constitution and Culture, a friend of Dan Wright's who is active duty, 
has been negatively affected by this. She is waiting on orders to drop because, simply because of the fact she is attached to a reserve unit, and they don't know when, their ne- when or if their next batch of funding is coming. All right, naval readiness. Uh, first of all, in, in 17 alone, if we do not see some kind of supplemental come in set, uh, for this fiscal year uh, without a CR, uh, within a month we're going to have to shut down air wings. We're going to have to defer maintenance on several availabilities for our surface ships and submarine maintenance facilities. Uh, we are just flat out out of money. That's what continuing rev- resolutions have done to our military. All right, here's a quick comment on the Air Force. I did not have time to grab a Marine comment. The average crew, I said we'd call ourselves 50% ready against a high-end threat in, in certain parts of our Air Force. That number is considerably below that. The reason the Air Force says they're so low, they can't keep pilots in the air long enough because they don't have the fuel or the maintenance supplies to keep planes in the air which also leads to them having trouble retaining pilots because pilots love to do one thing and one thing only. They like to fly. And if they can't fly in the military because military has budget cuts, they're going to finish out their contract and move on to Delta United or some commercial carrier that will happily put them in the air. So what can I say? Congress, get off your six. Get the military the funding it requires. Stop having us lose our best to the commercial aviation sector. Now, I will say, as a side note on that, that the commercial aviation sector recruits 4,000 pilots a year. The military puts out 2,000. So even if they ever take every last one of them, guess what? Still not going to have enough pilots. So that means this nation needs about 6,000 new pilots a year. We aren't getting that many. All right, I'm just looking for two stories here that I want to wrap up the show with, and then I got to get on out of here for the Jen and Rick show. All right, U.S. coalition forces have focused on. on training a post-dash police force in Iraq. The U.S.-led coalition is training 3,000 Iraqi police and border officers to help provide security in Iraq once Dash militants are pushed out of their last major stronghold in Mosul. This move reflects a shift from training an advancement army that has been repelling the militants to building a security force capable of countering the radical group's Return to its roots as terrorists utilizing bombs and guerrilla tactics. When Daesh no longer functions as an occupying force, the requirements will be a little bit different, said U.S. Army Major General Joe Martin. So, that's a good sign. They are thinking about not how to, just how to retake it. They're looking down the road at how to maintain it. All right, let's see if, if I can find that one last story real quick. And this is one I don't think you will... Here, anywhere else. Just looking for it. Yeah, this pile of paper gets unruly, especially with one hand. I thought I'd set it aside, but and there went my coffee. All right, folks, I just can't seem to lay paw on it. So we are go- on that note, folks. I'm gonna blame it on one hand syndrome, and I'm gonna as you hear the papers flying. Oh yeah. And I'm
I'm going to get on out of here and make room for the Jen and Rick show, followed by America Off the Rails. And just as a reminder, one lucky subscriber to the KLRN Radio newsletter. What, you didn't know we had a newsletter? Get on over to klrnradio.com and hit the subs- see the subscribe link on any page. And add your email address to the list, because one lucky subscriber will be notified by email that they can win station manager Anne's own personal coffee mug. And this is something she had custom made that can be purchased in any store. For more details, go to the klrnradio.com site and click on What's New. It's a tab right on the homepage. Can't miss it, folks. And as always, you can follow me on Twitter at Jesse's POV. And until tomorrow, folks, I'm out of here!